doing something different here and hopefully it doesn't cause the cosmic collapse. Hi, my name's Michael and today I want to review a non-translated book and that is Fleischmann is in Trouble by Taffy Brozier, Ackner. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this book is I just finished it and for some reason the book piqued my interest so I thought I definitely had to check it out so I did and it kind of exceeded my expectations it kind of blew me away and it's a book that I haven't stopped thinking about so I thought why not do a video talk about it discuss the book and maybe get other people interested or have a conversation about it so let's start with the premise of the book just to go over it it basically follows a man Toby Fleischman who is in the midst of a divorce he been married for 14 years he has two kids one is 12 years old and one's eight I believe and he's just trying to navigate this kind of messy divorce there's a lot going on the book discusses a lot about their relationship how it came to be how it blossomed and their marriage life there's a lot of reflection there's a lot of pondering what went wrong but the book kind of focuses mainly on this divorce and the main, in the main plot, Rachel, the wife, has dropped the kids off while he was still asleep and she's never heard from again. Well, she is heard from again, but there's been three weeks of no communication. She was meant to pick him up and no one can get a hold of her. So that's the basic premise. But there's so much going on with the book and I feel like I want to discuss it because I... I think this is what made the book interesting. This is what made the book worth checking out. And let's call it a, what it is. It's a social satire, kind of in the vein of a Philip Roth novel, this middle-aged man dealing with a relationship breakdown in New York City. You know, this plot has been done millions of times. And I kind of like this kind of story. I kind of like exploring people trying to discover themselves, people uh, pick themselves back up after things have fallen apart. This idea of starting fresh and starting new. And obviously I just like to read about people suffering because who doesn't? So we have this story of this marriage falling apart and it's narrated from one of Toby's oldest friend and she used to work at a men's magazine and she's kind of an outsider but she's a friend of Toby's so she gets to hear a lot about what's happening from Toby's point of view and in this case Toby is a doctor who has had some mishaps with his career his research grant has fallen through that kind of made him upset but he wants to heal people he likes what he does essentially he likes that one-on-one -on -one experience with patience his wife is very driven she has her own agency where she deals with a lot of actors and clientele and she's grown this business she left a agency that wasn't really treating her well so she created her own agency She's built this business and she is passionate about this business, which I think is an important thing to realise. She's very passionate about this business and Toby seems fine with being more of a stay-at-home dad, raising the kids. But as the years get on, they kind of grow apart and the marriage kind of breaks down and he starts resenting her for not being around as much and has asked for divorce a few times and all that kind of thing until eventually they do decide to separate. So the main focus of the book is kind of this new beginning for him. He's joined a couple of dating apps. He's jumping in the world of internet dating. And I think it's really interesting how this book explores this from this perspective, like, I wasn't around in the age of Tinder, so I don't know what dating would be like on Tinder. And I think Toby has a similar kind of 
idea of dating and he's all of a sudden been propositioned by these women that want to have sex with him and he's having this very new experience of people desiring him so much and getting a lot of sex, getting a lot of raunchy photos and it's a very new and interesting situation for him. And I can't, I, I really was fascinated by this. It was like an exploration of internet dating from an outsider, from someone that had just been, been single after a long marriage, a long relationship, and trying to navigate the new dating scene. And I found that fascinating. I found that interesting to explore. And I think there was a whole lot of, interesting elements that came up with like how you present yourself how you uh responding to comments and messages how, what you're putting in your profile are you really presenting your true self or just something that will get more attention and then there's the thing of setting age ranges where he starts off with a very wide age range of and finding that the type of women he was interested in is definitely not the ones in their 20s. They were the ones more in their 40s, more his age. And just navigating different elements of this app was really interesting to me because I feel like he was starting to understand like the pros and cons of maybe internet dating, like how fake it is, how much of a show is be put on how much easier it can be to organize hookups there are positives and negatives but it's a very different scene it's a unique experience for him and like he really enjoys it but then he starts feeling that the whole thing feels fake and not genuine and starts being less and less interested in the erotic nature of internet dating and more seeking out more real connections and I found just watching that experience of him being very tantalized and very seduced by this whole situation to feeling empty really fascinating to follow but this is so much more it's more than just new life and internet dating and relationships in the modern era and the breakdown of a relationship and if you don't want to know spoilers or too much about the book i'd probably suggest you stop here because i want to really look at the real story that's happening in this book the real focus of this book and that is something that starts getting revealed slowly over time. Like the bu book builds you up to think of Toby as, as this nice guy who's looking after his kids. He's always making sure he's home early to have dinner with his kids and spend time with them. And he's basically a house husband. And I think that was really interesting to look at the gender roles that are played out with this. Because the book portrays him as this really great guy that's doing everything for his family. And Liz, who's the narrator, she stumbles upon Rachel in a cafe where after she's been missing for three weeks. And she she goes up to her and, and asks if she needs help because she's looking really disheveled and really run down. And then you start to see Rachel's side of the story about how her drive and then her, her ambition were always looked down upon. She's meant to be a mother and a wife and that's basically her whole identity. She wasn't meant to be this person building a great empire, building this business that was flourishing. She wasn't meant to be the person that had to work late. And she wanted to be there for her kids. She wanted to be there for her husband. She even made an effort to try and get home, even though she still had plenty of work to do. And she knew she'd have to do work at home. So 
she would do that just because she wanted to be there. But when she was home, it, it was very difficult to do work because the kids needed attention as well. And her husband demanded attention. Her husband likes to take really long walks to a restaurant. He likes to just stroll. But for her, time is very important. If they went on the stroll to the restaurant, it meant that she'd have to do her emails and stuff that she could have done on the cab ride over at the restaurant instead of spending it with her, with her husband. And she wanted to make more time for her kids and husband, but she didn't know how. She had this business she's grown that's really taking off, but she was unsure how to offload some of those responsibilities to free herself up. She didn't know how to trust the people around her to do some of the lesser tasks, the, the more mundane stuff. And she was struggling to try and get that help every time she tried to express her feeling of feeling out of unable to pass off some of the help or unable to make the time. She gets dismissed as being a bad mother, as being a bad wife. And there's this whole exploration of if she was a man, she would have been treated so much different. And because she's a woman, everyone expects her to be the housewife, expects her to be home, looking after the kids and looking after her husband. And because the roles have reversed in this relationship, and that seemed to work to begin with, but societal pressures and the pressures her husband puts on her to be what he wants her to be instead of this driven businesswoman that she is, is really explored in great detail and great pressure and great, there's like this great focus on how gender defines a person, how gender defines how they how people perceive someone and how they expect them to act and what they expect them to do. And she's had a terrible life. She has never felt love. She was picked on constantly when she was younger because she was poor and she was in a school where she was always teased because she couldn't afford designer clothes and all this really has molded her into this person where she doesn't want that for her kids and she and to her she thinks money is the answer status is the answer having fancy clothes great art great place will fix that for her kids and that's how she feels like she needs to express her love and make her children happy. And it's a really interesting novel because you start off thinking, oh, Toby's this great guy. And then you start hearing her story and you start thinking, maybe he's not a great guy. Maybe he's not understanding his wife properly. Maybe they're not communicating properly in couples therapy, the, even the therapist and her husband are ganging up on her because they expect her to be a certain way and that's not who she is. And communication obviously is a big part of a relationship and a big part of why this relationship is breaking down. But you see how much of social expectations and how much of gender roles plays a big focus on why this relationship breaks down and there are so many little nuanced issues that are played out through the book that really explore this in a really interesting way and that's what I found so fascinating about this book. This is what really excited me and interests me because bit of divorce, it's a plot device that's been done over and over again but I love the way she's used this divorce to explore gender politics 
and I love the way she's used it to flip the script kind of thing. There is a quote that I read somewhere where the author said, the only way someone will listen to a woman is to tell their story from a man. And I think that's what she's done with this book. She's told this story of this relationship. She's filled in all the backstory and everything. And then she's flipped it right at the end. And you got to see Rachel's side of the story, her struggles, her neglect and how she was mistreated by everyone around her because she's a woman with ambition and with a business she loves and with her own struggles and unable to get the help she needs because no one wants to give her that help and no one wants to take the time to listen to her long enough to help her. And I think there is a tiny subplot in this book that really kind of explores that similar issue really well. And that is when she was giving birth to her first child, there was complications and the doctor tried to force induced labour by trying to stick his head in and try and break her water. That way she couldn't leave the hospital and that really upset her. That really made her feel violated. And while her husband was a doctor and made a complaint about it, he didn't quite understand the traumatic experience she had and how she felt like she was not a person. She was just a vessel for this baby. She became inhuman and all they cared about was getting the baby out, not her health and safety. And she kept trying to deal with this issue, tried to seek help. And she found a rape support group seemed to be helping her the most. She'd sit there in these groups, not telling her story, but she kind of like was using tools that they were teaching to try and deal with this violation she's experienced. And later on in the book, she was uh she decided she wants to share her story with the group because she feel like feels like maybe these these people will understand my myself what I've gone through this violation that I feel, and they don't they don't they kick her out of the group because she wasn't technically raped, and didn't deserve to be there even though it was the group that was making her feel like she was dealing with her issues, and I think that's an interesting kind of metaphor to summarize her feelings because she was this person that's just not really understood this person that no one took the time to understand what she was going through understand her needs understand her desires and how she wanted to live life how she wanted to grow this business that she cared about how she wanted to ask for help for offloading some of the extra work she was taking on but she didn't know how and no one took the time to listen to her so she never got the help she needed and I keep thinking about that I keep thinking about this situation she's in over and over again this idea that people aren't always going to be what you expect them to be what society wants you to be and are we listening to these people? Are we taking the time to understand them? Are we judging someone on the social expectations that they're a woman or they're a mother or a wife or they're single, so they must be looking for a relationship. They want to, They must be looking for marriage. And there's so many other labels that get put on people that push people to conform in a way that might not suit them and that's what I loved about this book and that's why I think people should read it I'm going to leave it at that but it's definitely something I'm going to think about over and over again let me know if you've read this book 
let me know if you plan to read it. Let me know if you've got any uh, other thoughts on it. And please like, subscribe, leave a comment. All those things would help greatly. And if you want to find me elsewhere, my social media is in the description below. I love talking about literature. I normally talk about translation, so this is something different for me. But it was something I wanted to talk about. As always, thank you for watching. Goodbye.